Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar creating JCR based PHP applications with PHP TR and Magnolia CMS. We're glad you could join us today. I'm Gregory Joseph, software engineer at Magnolia CMS and I'll give you a quick overview of what we'll be covering in this webinar together with a few housekeeping items. All attendees are muted, however this doesn't mean you can't ask questions. Please feel free to submit them throughout the um, Go to webinar control panel and we'll do our best to answer them during the Q&A session towards the end of this webinar. A day after the webinar, which is tomorrow, we'll also be posting a video recording of the presentation on the Magnolia CMS website as well as the presentation slides. You will receive an email with all links to all materials. Following the webinar, feel free to contact the presenter directly using the email. Um, you know, you'll get his address and contact information um, at the end of the webinar. If you want to tweet about the webinar at any point, we only ask that you include um, the following hashtags, which you can see on the screen right now, hash Magnolia CMS, hash PHPCR. This um, webinar will last approximately 60 minutes, and today's presentation will introduce the PHPCR project and show you how it can be used to access your Magnolia CMS content. We will then um, conclude with a question and answer session. There, um, so as I said before, I'm Gregory Joseph. So this is me here on the left side of the screen. I'm a software engineer at Magnolia and I contributed the um, Magnolia and PHPCR uh, Magnolia module. Um, this is my um, Twitter handle. And our main speaker today is David Buchmann, he will be, um, well, he will be, as I said before, introducing the PHPCR project. Um, and I think David's going to take it from here. So, David. Right. Hello, everybody. So, I'm going to present you this Magnolia and PHP integration. I work at the Swiss company Leap, and I'm a core contributor to the contributor to the PHPCR project and to PHPCR implementations. My Twitter handle is uh, DBU, so please feel free to ping me, ask me questions, or send me your comments. So, um, first, what is JCR or PHPCR at all? So it is a content repository, and well, one is just Java and the other is PHP, but they are the same. So PHPCR is really a translation of JCR into PHP, um, where we, I, I'm going to speak a little bit about that as well. There are slight differences because we didn't want to stupidly translate everything exactly by the word, but more by the spirit, and PHP and Java are not exactly the same. So there are some little differences, but the, the concept is really the same. A content repository is a way to decouple the storage logic from the application logic. So the, the idea is that you, well, either you write your applications and you have a powerful storage that does a lot more than just a stupid uh, they call that stupid database, like a relational database or a MongoDB or just a file system, but something that is really made for storing content. Um, and you don't need to reinvent that for each of your projects. Or on the other hand, you, if you think like building a great storage is your, your um, point of sale or what you want to, what you want to promote, then you can write it and implement this standard and it will be usable by more applications. It's more accessible than if you just write some content storage framework without, an, without a common API so that people who write the applications about the JCR or PHPCR can use your storage engine just like that without learning too many new things. Um, so, as I somehow said, the data in a content management system, it's, uh, it's usually it's rather unstructured or it's not 
not really the, the relational database models way of data. Um, so what I'd say is that uh, NoSQL could be a cool option. But then content isn't totally flat. It's not just you don't need a simple thing to just throw in isolated pieces of content. You usually have a tree or even some kind of graph structure. And most NoSQLs are not really made for trees and graphs. So, well, look at graph databases for that. But then if you have a CMS, if you have this kind of really content-heavy application, you also want to create versions. You want to maybe have a locking mechanism to lock one document. Um, you kind of need all kind of different services on top of your storage. And that's where um, the, this content repository standard um, comes in. So people got together something like 10 years ago to define the Java content repository and built it around this uh, tree access model. Like it's really every all content is in a tree. Uh, alternatively, you have unique IDs for every element that you want to have such a unique ID so that you can have references that are stable even if you move something around. Then it defines a search API, which um, in a way is similar to what you can do with SQL to search on that content, but it incorporates the, the specific features of the content repository so you can search for children of something or descendants of something, for example. And it has a versioning built in where you can create versions of nodes and even branches if you use the full versioning. There is the possibility to import and export XML. So that's quite cool because you can really export the part or your whole repository into an XML file, which is exactly defined by the standard. So that means you can import it again, but also into a different implementation of the content repository. And because PHVCR uses the same format, you can even use that to just copy data or move data from a Java content repository to a PHP content repository. Um, so it's kind of like an SQL dump, but with the difference that it's not specific to your database implementation. It's general, it's defined by the standard. Then there is a locking and transaction support, so you can lock nodes or subtrees. You can have transactions to have many operations and only commit at the end. There is also a permission system to define what user can do what and uh, individual access control on, on individual nodes or subtrees again. And finally, an observation component that allows you to build almost like a message queue by listening to changes on the, on the node or on a subtree or, or to removals or additions of nodes so that you can uh, can have your code called if something changes. Um, almost all of that is optional features, so the standard is modular, and there is a cap capability discovery built in, so your application could, for example, check do we have versioning. If we have, you offer the, the controls to, to work with versions, and if not, you just hide them. I'm going to talk a bit more about those uh, concepts of JCR, PHPCR. So for those of you who are familiar already with, uh, with JCR or PHPCR, um, that's going to be probably kind of repetition. But if you know more uh, Magnolia, then you might not know the, how it actually stores its data. Because this is like, I'm not going to talk about the I mean Magnolia API, but about really the low level database Magnolia is using. So as I said, basically it's a hierarchical 
document store, so we have a, a root node, and every node is a child of another node, except this root node, which is the root. And that's enforced by the API. You can only create a node by adding it to some node. So you, you're sure every node has a parent except for the root node. A node actually is just a name, and it can have a type, a node type. And then it can have child nodes, and it can have properties, and the properties are the thing that contain actually values. So the node itself usually isn't really the information, it's just the container, and the actual properties are what contains the values. Values can be uh, quite a lot of things, not just strings or numbers and such primitives, but also uh, binary file data, like in PHP we use streams for that. Uh, I think in Java it's also um, using some stream, some kind of stream implementation. And values can also be references to other nodes so that you can interlink your, um, your content. So you can think of that kind of like a XML document at the base where the nodes would be elements and the properties would be, um, uh, would be attributes of those elements. Um, just to see that in an example of Magnolia. Um, this is the, when you go to the tools, to the JCR browser, you see kind of a raw, raw access to your database. So you see here what is in, um, what is in the repository. So I can open nodes here, open and close them. I see child nodes, I see properties as well. So for example here, the node news and events, which is under a demo project, has this um, field, this property called section text, which contains some text. I could also go and edit that. And when we look at the website, it's we see, okay, this is this news and events, and this is this uh, section text thing that we've seen. So in the end, the website is really built from from those pieces of data. Um, as I said, the nodes, you can really think of them as XML elements. You could also think of them kind of as folders in a file system. Um, they can be created, deleted, modified, copied, so you can move them around. They always have a path, which follows from, from having the parent and the parent's parent until the root node. The root node is slash, and then you just put together the names. And when interacting with JCR or PHPCR, you can use that path to get directly to a node so you don't have to get to the root node and walk down the hierarchy all the time if you already know what you need to get. So, for example, if we have this path of my path underwater fish, it means the parent of that node is the my path underwater node, and the node name itself is fish. And then, like, all the real data is stored in the properties. Before I said a node also has a primary type, the, the idea of that is it defines what kind of children and properties this node can have. So it allows you to build your kind of um, database schema to control what, what uh, structure can be put into into your content repository. Um, but contrary to, to typical databases, this is optional. So here it, you, you can kind of choose if you want rather the unstructured or the structured approach. You can use the anti-unstructured type, which just allows all kind of children, all kind of properties. 
or you can use built-in types that define like what should a file or folder representation look like and then you can define your own custom types to define what your nodes should look like. You can have required properties that means you if you create such a node you have to specify the property so you, you can avoid mistakes and you can have just like allowed or optional properties or pattern for what can be allowed. <coughs> then there is also the mixing types which um, are kind of like traits for the nodes so there is no multiple inheritance for the primary types there is just single inheritance so one primary type can inherit from another but if you have uh, some cross features like typically the creation timestamp or a modification timestamp uh, you can use mixins to model that and you can also add such mixins to a node during the lifetime the mixins they define they can define like new properties that should be allowed even if the primary node type didn't mention those properties or those children, the mixing can add such permissions. Excuse me. Okay, just had to cough a bit. Um, then there is workspaces. Um, each workspace has its own root node and so it, it has its own tree of nodes um, so it's kind of each single workspace is similar to a XML document or to a Unix file system each workspace has its own root its own structure you can use them like in a version control system like in git or subversion um, there is uh, API methods to clone nodes between workspaces and to merge content back between them or you can use them independently as a like you would use separate um, separate databases in inside uh, one MySQL instance and Magnolia uses the approach to use them for separating content images uh, document management system and so on Okay, so now enough of repetitions for people who already know JCR. Uh, just some words on the differences. Um, I think the biggest difference is that we completely dropped all the value and value factory class. And the reason for that is that PHP is loosely typed. So you can just um, return anything from a method. You don't have to specify what type it will return and value was basically a wrapper around the properties value to to work around that or to handle that in Java so we just removed that and in the same direction also we didn't need like all those different range iterators that JCR has we just have a traversable on everything and then we even added on the node a uh, get property value so you don't even need the property object if you don't care too much so you can just directly get the value for a property of a node with one call and node and properties are also traversable so you can iterate over the children and with, with the properties it's just for uh, multi-value properties you can traverse over the values of those properties there is a couple of implementations. Um, the Jackalope family has two different transport layers, so it can store into Jackrabbit, and that's actually what we will see afterwards. You can talk to Jackrabbit over a, a kind of WebDAV extended protocol. So basically, it's HTTP, and there is the doctrine dball transport that's 
stores into databases using the doctrine database abstraction layer. And then the Midgard 2 content repository also provides uh, their interfaces for uh, PHP by implementing PHP CR. So how do Magnolia and PHP CR communicate? Uh, let's speak about Magnolia for a second. I guess you know or hope you know or now you know at least that Magnolia CMS stores its data using this Java content repository standard and it uses the Jackrabbit implementation of it. Jackrabbit is the, the reference implementation and it's open source so that's also the reason why we took that as a storage for the Jackalope that we wrote in PHP and that way we can both like Magnolia and PHP can store into the same database <coughs> on the Magnolia side uh, you need to to put some uh, some plugin into the Magnolia installation so that it listens to the DAVEX requests because Jackrabbit can be used over DAVEX or it can be used directly uh, by calling methods on, on objects and Magnolia usually is using these direct calls but with the remoting from, from PHP you need to have the DAVEX, it doesn't work the other way. A couple of ideas what this could be handy for. So uh, one example could be uh, we did our company website in uh, Magnolia CMS but now we built some dashboard and we want to show our activities and we built that in PHP because the people who worked on that were more fluent in PHP or we found some cool libraries that do most of what we need. But then we find out ah, we want to show some recently edited pages of the website for example so we need to access some data and with this setup we can totally do that so we can continue using Magnolia but we just pull some information out of the Magnolia storage into PHP to, to show that in our dashboard or another example we have gathered information from, from social networks in a PHP application and then we create the draft news into Magnolia. So we, we have this PHP application, it creates a, a news entry draft and stores that into Magnolia and then the, the web editor can just go into Magnolia and review what was generated and publish that or adapt it. We could also use something like the Symfony Content Management Framework as a front end to display content and use Magnolia CMS just as a content editing application. Or of course it can be used to, to do any kind of data migrations between PHP and Magnolia or actually PHP and anything using Jackrabbit um, in both directions. Or data migrations or also data synchronizations. So now let's get to see some code. Um, to, to try that or play with that you will need PHP, you will need Magnolia 4.5 and you need Git to install the PHP side of the, of the project. To set up Magnolia, well first you set it up like usual. It's documented on the website how to do that. And then you need uh, this Jackrabbit DAVEX module which makes Jackrabbit exposed over DAVEX. And you copy that into the, the Magnolia instance then you need to restart Magnolia and finally log into Magnolia as super user to, to, to accept to have 
the question and accepting to update the installation because uh, Magnolia will see automatically that you drop the new files into that folder. And right now you then have one more step to go to the configuration of your server and allow like a lot of uh, HTTP methods which are needed to to allow this communication. By default, they're prohibited, which will make Jackalope not be able to communicate with Jackrabbit as it should. Uh, but Greg told me that the next version, which should come out shortly, the next version of the Jackrabbit DevX module will set this configuration option automatically so you don't have to do that manually anymore. Um, so right now we have version 0 0.1 and if you see the version 0 0.2 uh, then you can uh, then you don't need to care anymore about configuring those methods. Um, just a quick screenshot to show you where that is. So it's in the configuration part and you go to server IP config methods. But again this shouldn't be needed anymore as soon as the 0 0.2 plugin is out. On the PHP side, um, first thing first thing is to install Composer and then have Composer initialize a project and install Jackalope Jackrabbit, which is this Jackalope with the transport to talk to Jackrabbit. Um, that's all on PHP side. And then we can start to code. So first thing is bootstrapping the application and Composer generates us an autoload file so that we just can include that and then all the Jackalope classes will be autoloaded. Then we have to, to configure the connection to the backend. So the, the URL you see here is uh, what you get if you use the default installation. You might need something different depending on how you configured Magnolia. Um, the important thing is just you, you put the plugin into the author instance and then you add this dot um, to talk to the to the DAVX plugin. Then on the next line we instantiate the repository by calling the static method on the factory of Jackrabbit, Jackalope Jackrabbit. And then we we provide the login credentials. That's again the default for a Magnolia install. Call a login, and here we specify the workspace we want to use. And first we use the website workspace, which contains the pages. And once we have that, we can use it to read some value out. So very simple. We just say, ah, oh, I want the node at this path and from that node we ask for the title property and then output that which will just output history because that's a title property of that node. Maybe just if we look here in the browser we set demo project about history about mm. thank you about history and there should be a title somewhere, right? Um, here it says updated company history because I already run the code that comes later. Um, but first let's see how to read binary data. In Magnolia, usually if you, if you have like files uploaded into Magnolia, they will live in this DMS workspace. So first thing we connect to the DMS and then let's get this Magnolia flyer. So we ask for the node having the flyer. Um, the actual flyer is in the document subnode. Then we get like all the property values of that subnode. And output like what MIME type was stored in, in the document node. Then we read what the file name is, what the extension is. That's all properties of the document node. And finally, we 
let PHP write out the binary content, which is in JCR data. So the JCR data property contains that stream of a PDF, and in the end it will save a PDF to the disk. We can also update content, so that's why the Magnolia install I showed you had this different title. We again get the node, and then we set the property title to this different value, or we can also add a new property the same way, so you, the JCR and PHPCR don't distinguish between updating or creating, you just set a property to something. <coughs> And then when you change data, you always need to call save because those calls, they will not be persisted immediately. They will just change the local state of your data. And once you call save, it's, um, it's kind of like a transaction. It's writing everything in a go. Um, creating a new node is similar. So as I said before, you first need to have the node a node to attach the new node to. You cannot just create one out of the blue. So we get this node where we want to add it. We select a name and a node type for it, and then call add node. And then we set some properties on it. And then again, we have to save, otherwise nothing is going to happen. Um, yeah, that's just a screenshot showing again the result of writing data. Then we have this, uh, the possibilities to walk through the tree. So if we have, uh, let's say we have this, we get this node, then we can call get nodes on it, which means we want to have all the nodes, and we loop over them, check if they have the property abstract. If they have, we read it, and finally we output it so we tell the path of that child and the abstract. We can also use the search, which is similar to SQL. The differences are you say in the prom, you say what node type you want. If you want everything, you just say NT base, because every node type extends NT base. And in the where, you have some additional options, additional criteria, like this is descendant node, which means I want all children or children of children of this node. Then we create that query um, and execute it, get some result, and on the result we can get the nodes. We could also um, just select some properties if we don't want to create the nodes to save some bandwidth to make it faster. Um, now we created on top of PHPCR, we also created the uh, object document mapper, which is part of the Doctrine project, so it's very similar to the Doctrine ORM. The difference really is that it integrates those concepts of PHPCR. So you can have, um, you can map children, you can map references, you can just assign, have a, a document and then have a children mapping, put children into that field and let Doctrine care about how to create all those nodes and update PHPCR. Um, we also played around in a hack day last year together with Gregory, where we managed to have the have Doctrine read from the Magnolia Jackrabbit and use the metadata of Magnolia to determine uh, what PHP class it should, should instantiate for each node, so that you can have you could create your PHP representation of Magnolia content. Um, just a quick live demo. We'll try to hope that it works, otherwise we watch the movie. Um, so here we created um, in a Symfony PHP application that in the backend talks to Jackrabbit to 
to the same Jackrabbit as Magnolia. So I can go here and edit the slogan. And then I, it's, this is some front end editing. It just stores automatically directly. So if I reload, it's going to say PHP was here now. Yes, it does. And when we look at the Magnolia site, so you see right now the slogan is yes, we are open. And if I reload that page, it says PHP was here. So can, it's just a demo to show how we can write something in a PHP application and then change the data that Magnolia is using. So for the conclusions, um, well, first some word of, of warning, don't get over enthusiastic with the content repository. In our opinion, our experience, uh, not everything is, is uh, well done into a content repository. It's not the solution to everything. Typically, if you have data that you want to aggregate on, it's not really a use case for the content repository. This uh, SQL-like language that I showed before, it doesn't have any uh, count or sum or more fancier mathematical operators. That's really not the goal of the content repository. So typically, if you have a web store, for example, um, Putting the product description into the content repository would sound like a good idea because it's it's um, only like semi-structured, I'd say. So you, you have a tree of your products probably, and then each product can be a bit different in the sense you have maybe t-shirts with colors and sizes, and then you have a book which just has like one, it doesn't have any options. and this can be very mo well modeled in a content repository because it's not so strict about what type of uh, content it can put anywhere. However, the, the inventory and the orders, <coughs> they go better into a relational database because that's things where you want to do aggregation queries. You want to know what did we sell in the last month and things like that. And thanks to the unique IDs, uh, you can totally link between the two databases without problems. So you just make all the all your nodes referenceable, and then you can store in the relational database the UUID of the nodes that you talk about, and that way you can link between the two. Um, these are actually links, so we will put the slides online after the talk so that you can click them as well. Uh, we have a tutorial showing you a bit more of the steps that you can take with PHPCR. And if you want to see something built on top of it, there is the Symfony 2 content management framework which uses actually the PHPCR ODM to model a content management system in in the Symfony 2 PHP framework. There is a couple of uh, real life cases where PHP CR is used. There is a uh, Servo Grove, the American hosting company. They built their knowledge base application, uh, which they open sourced on top of PHP CR. And as I said, it's used in the Symfony content management framework. And there's a couple of websites that people did not only at Leap to, to build content management with it and as a storage layout choose the content repository. What are our next steps? Uh, we plan to release a stable version 1.0 of Jackalope in the next month. So yeah, that you could have something that you know is is a version that you can count on, that you know it can do what it says at that point. Because right now you can just 
get like the latest master or check out some alpha tag which still has bugs in it. Then we would like to implement the security and ACL support uh, in Jackalope. The problem there is that Jackrabbit does not expose that over the DubX protocol. It only works if you have a Java application that is tied directly into Jackrabbit. Um, but there is uh, plans to have Jackrabbit Oak out in this year, I think. And that's Jackrabbit Oak is the next major version of Jackrabbit. And that version should is planned to expose that over the remoting and then we could also support those features. There's a lot of people contributing to Jackalope. Uh, it started all inside Leap with a few people working on it and investing time until it got to a point where it's actually usable. And then a lot of people jumped in and started to help on the development so that today it's not a, like a leap internal project anymore. But we are still committed to it and still commit resources on it, as do some other companies as well. <coughs> and there is quite a few projects in the PHP world that have expressed their interest. So, well, as said, the Symfony CMF is totally built on it. Uh, for Midgard, for the Midgard 2, it's the same. They really use it at the core. Uh, for Nuku, Easy Publish, Typo 3, and Drupal, there are plugins to, to use the content repository. Um, and especially Typo 3 is using something very similar to PHPCR. So they're discussing if they actually want to move to explicitly and directly use PHPCR. This is again a couple of links that you can use. Um, once we uploaded those slides to get to PHPCR, to Jackalope or Midgard and to the ODM and links for further reading about the standard. There isn't like a lot of standard documentation about PHPCR because it's really um, the same as JCR. So you're supposed to read the JCR documentation if you want to know the concepts. And then there is just the API documentation for PHPCR and some tutorials. So thank you. And now I'm ready for questions. Well, thank you, David. Um, we we hope everyone learned something today. And um, it actually looks like we have some folks who are curious to learn more. So um, I'm, I'm going to go through some questions. Uh, there's one here um, asking me where the slides uh, and the webinar recording can be viewed later. Um, you will get an email by tomorrow, I believe, uh, with links to all of that. Uh, it will be posted on the magnoliacms.com website. Um, exact link, I don't know yet, but it will be in that email you, that all attendees will get tomorrow. Um, now for a more um, technical question, I, I have one here about the same name siblings. I think you did mention that, that Jackalope doesn't support this yet whereas this is something that is supported in, um, in, in JTR. Is there any specific reason for Jackalope not supporting this? Or, I don't know, is this a design choice or something that's just on the to-do list? Um, so it's something we don't do at the moment. <clears throat> the main reason is that it's um, not that trivial. I mean, it is complicating because if you have, if you don't have them, every node has just its name, and the path is very obvious. And as soon as you have those same name siblings, you start to use indexes. So it looks like an X path where you put square brackets and numbers, and it's 
on the usage side, as far as I know, even inside the JCR standard, there was some discussion if that's a, it's a good pattern to do that or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the main reason they integrated it was they wanted to be able to import any random XML document, and random XML documents tend to have those same name siblings. If you think about the uh, HTML page, so it's something that can be supported, something that doesn't make sense. I mean, I'm not opposed to have it in Jackalope, but it's just that uh, so far we didn't need it, and apparently nobody else needed it so desperately that they wanted to implement it. But that's right. not right. A, a design decision or anything. It's more that more the practicality of an open source project. Right, I see. Okay. Um, could could you maybe um, go back to the um, the architecture diagram? I have a, a question here where um, people are asking if calls to the JCR from Jackalope are going through Magnolia, and why not access Jackrabbit directly? So I guess we, we probably need to. Um, show a little bit, you know, the architecture and, and what sits mm -hmm. where on what server and who talks to who. Okay. Um, so basically everything that's here glued together is one process for the for the operating system. So in PHP we have our code that uses the well actually it uses objects of Jackalope that implement those interfaces, but our code thinks of it just sees those interfaces. It doesn't care what Jackalope is. And then we have this um, HTTP connection to the, basically it goes to the Magnolia, whatever container, web application container you use. So if you use the standard install, it's just Tomcat. And inside, inside Tomcat, this .dubx is routed to, to this Jackrabbit .dubx plugin, which Perfect. Uh, right, serverlet, thanks. <laughs> Use the right name. So it's routed to this servlet which just exposes the Jackrabbit remoting part. So Jackrabbit itself implements this um, handler for HTTP requests in the using the DAVX protocol. And Magnolia itself, it's not using the remoting at all. So you, for Magnolia, as far as I know, it's not intended or not possible to put Jackrabbit on a different server than Magnolia. So you, you, Magnolia you is can. just using. You, yeah, you can, but okay. Yeah. Out of yeah. out of the box, and typically these two are going to sit on the same machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's not using the remoting protocol. This Dubex protocol, it's using the Jackrabbit has different modes of. Uh, how an application can communicate with it. And one is a client library that talks over DAVX, and the other one is a library that directly calls into the Jackrabbit. And then you have everything in the same process. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, that's what Magnolia is doing, right? Right. Yeah. And and then I here I just added to the picture that you will have like other web requests coming in from to, to Magnolia from the editors, from the visitors of the website. And they will land here and they will go to Magnolia, which in turn will go to Jackrabbit to read the right. data. Right. So um, on, on the Magnolia side, you don't change really anything. You just put this little connector glue code so that Jackalope talks to Jackrabbit. But Magnolia itself cannot interfere on what um, Jackalope is doing, except that again on Magnolia side you could write some observer that looks what's done on the repository. If you need to know when the Jackalope side, the PHP side is writing some data, you could observe some nodes and get a call back on that and do something. Right. Um, do, do you have any uh, any idea on on performance? Um, one of the one of the questions I have is is where queries are executed. Um, you know, we, we've seen your code with PHPCR that uh, well, 
the PHP application writes a, asks PHP CR to run a query, which in turn goes to Jackalope. Is Jackalope executing a query, or is that is the query itself sent over DevEx? Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any form of caching of the results, or? You know, um, okay. Essentially, I guess so, I have a couple of questions about that, which are, you know, what's mm -hmm. the impact on Magnolia? Is my site, my production site, suddenly gonna perform? Uh, you know, is the performance gonna degrade on my on my main site just because we added a PHP application that suddenly starts querying it a lot? Um, so the way it works is. Um, the query is sent from from Jackalope to Jackrabbit because I mean otherwise we would have to to copy all the data out of Jackrabbit, which is not not realistic and doesn't make sense. So we send that query to Jackrabbit, which queries its database and returns just the result. Um, the queries themselves are actually not cached, as far as I know. Also that could be possible at least to like cache the exact same query to not run them again in the same session. But then you have to be aware that in PHP anyway, um, every if you write some website in PHP, every request is going to create a new session. So any caching is like, unless you do something extra, it's going to be per session. Uh, what we do is we, like inside the, the PHP CR session, we we store the nodes. So once you read a node, it will not be read again from Jackrabbit. That wouldn't even work really because if you change it, you need to have those changes persist or kept in the session so that you can save them if you want. So that means if you, <coughs> you just read some nodes and then read them again and again, it will not create any additional traffic if you manage to run some queries that are really taking a lot of load on Jackrabbit, then yes, you can create load on that side. But uh, I mean, it's not worse than if you would write that in Java, because right, it's right. doing it's doing the same thing on the Jackrabbit side as it would do if you talk to it from from Java. Right, uh, so on the caching yeah. side, we we also did work a bit on that, but mainly for the for the doctrine transport for the relational database, because we realized that usually Jackrabbit is really like really really fast, it has a good way of caching itself. It seems so. Probably doing too much caching on the Jackalope side again is kind of risking that we just cache the same thing on both sides and just waste memory and effort without really winning much. I mean, if we cache into memcache, it's just a request on memcache. And if Jackrabbit does good caching, it's just a request to Jackrabbit, which comes about to the same. Right. And I don't know about the Magnolia setup exactly, but I've seen there is this author instance and the whatever published website instance. Uh -huh. And if you can separate those two somehow, it could also help a lot because we, like, at least with the example we showed, we would connect to the author instance and not to the live instance. Not to the public, yeah. Well, I guess people would would connect to the public instance actually in production because this is where the data that's you know the, the content that has been validated by publishers is uh, published. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, it well, depends on the so use they, case, but yes. Right, they, but they probably wouldn't want, you know, work in progress type of content. They wouldn't want to see the actual published content. But mm -hmm. it's true that you could, um, you know, you could publish to n uh, public instances of Magnolia, for example. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I, so I guess the conclusion in terms of performance or or impact on Magnolia is essentially. You know, there is going to be an impact of sorts, but it's not going to be any different whether it's a PHP CR application or, uh, or you know, or some but additions Java. that you build in your in your Java slash Magnolia application. You just have to be aware that some stuff is being added. Um, yeah, to your I, I think if anything, you have a, a 
chance because you, you can move the the PHP server, it can be a different server, and then you would offload like some um, some of the work to a different server because what Jackrabbit does uh, when it sends the data out is, is more low level than if you write it in Java. So if anything, I think it should rather be lighter than heavier. Mm -hmm. And well, if you if you write some kind of website with PHP, then you would totally want to cache like some rendered pages or something for a moment, and not of course. not like recalculate that all the time. But that's the same in Java. I mean, I'm pretty sure Magnolia also yeah. does some caching so that it doesn't have to hit yeah. Rabbit for every page each time it's called. Otherwise, it wouldn't scale at all. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's taken care of. Um, I do have um, another question here. Uh, two actually, then I'm going to take as one. But um, uh, someone's asking if the if the DAVX module is providing access, to, or, or if there's a way to access another JCR. And well, so just to to recap what our module does, it's it doesn't do much. The, 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 most of the work is done by um, the, the DAVX servlet is actually a, a sub-module of Jackrabbit. So all we do on, on the Magnolia side is we just provided this little module that just installed this servlet and makes it, um, well, it just enables it in, um, in Magnolia itself. It just sets up the, the servlet and we doesn't do much else. It makes it configurable via admin central. Yeah, um, maybe to to avoid misunderstandings, we have to say or to make clear that um, this whole protocol and the DAVX thing is not part of JCR. So right now the JCR standard is a standard, um, it's an API, it's not a protocol. And that mm -hmm. means that any kind of remoting is is implementation specific, it's not part of right. the standard. And so DAVX okay. is something that the Jackrabbit team came up with as one possibility for remoting. Yeah, for and initially it was their way of remoting between Java applications so that you can have Jackrabbit on one server and the Java application talking to it somewhere else on okay. a different server. So they implemented the client in Java. And we oh, I didn't know that. basically okay. we re-implemented that in PHP so that in we PHP. can talk mm -hmm. to Jackrabbit. OK. Um, a quick one, someone is asking if the DAVX module will be available as a Maven dependency. It already is. Um, the version 0 one is actually on our Maven repository. 0 2 will also be shortly. And again, uh, links will be provided in the email that you will get tomorrow. I see that we're running out of time, so um, I should, we should probably get going. Um, thank you. Very much, David, for uh, for presenting. Thank you for um, for everyone to uh, who participated, asked questions. Uh, we're glad you could join us. We hope you enjoyed the session. Um, we hope you learned something. Um, so within the next few days, hopefully tomorrow, but uh, maybe the day after that, we'll be um, we'll be emailing you links to the webinar recording, to the slides. Um, all the links that were in uh, David's presentations will also be included. We will try to um, re, re you know, answer those those questions that you asked. If we missed any, we'll try to cover that in the email as well. Um, thank you again, and um, enjoy the rest of your day. See you soon. Bye bye. Thanks a lot, and goodbye from me too.